You know, the main change uh, that Senate Bill 656 brought into play is the fact that people now have an option. Uh, you do not have to uh, obtain a permit to, to carry a concealed firearm. You can still choose to do so. Uh, go, to the, go to the training class and submit yourself to a background check and get a permit from the sheriff's office. But it's not a requirement. Uh, effective January 1st of 2017, uh, you can choose to carry a concealed firearm if you can legally own a firearm without having a permit. I tried to distill it down to the simplest version. Uh, in the past, the, the self-defense portion of, of the law, also known as Stand Your Ground or the Castle Doctrine, pretty much prescribed that if you were in uh, your dwelling, business, home, you know, that's your castle and you can protect yourself. Uh, this law uh, pretty much extends that to you as a person wherever you might be. Um, you now have the right to defend yourself uh, from an immediate uh, violent threat regardless of where you might be and there is no duty uh, still for you to retreat in any way, shape or form. So that's a significant change in uh, the self-defense aspect of this law. So for private businesses, the restrictions are still in place that you as a private business owner can make that determination on whether you're going to allow firearms on the premises or not. Um, and if you're going to restrict that to either customers or employees, there must be signage in place stating that it's restricted premises and you cannot carry a concealed firearm onto the premises. Um, that restriction is still in place. Um, some changes to the law regarding uh, vehicles. Uh, and what, uh, what the circumstances are if someone prohibits that uh, are in place now, though. Um, uh, private employers cannot prohibit um, anyone, employee or a customer, from carrying a firearm in their vehicle on the premises, as long as that firearm's not used in any way, shape, or form. It's not taken out of the car, it's not brandished, it's not shown to anyone. Um, the second change is the fact that now any violations of this uh, provision of the statute. Uh, if someone carries a firearm, concealed firearm, onto your premises and you've posted it as not allowing that, that is no longer a criminal offense. So someone can be removed from the premises uh, and they can be fined, but they are not subjected to jail time uh, anymore. Yes, uh, that's a private business decision and uh, you can uh, certainly address that within your business and I, I suggest you contact your legal counsel about uh, if you're considering allowing your employees to have concealed carry on the premises uh, or allowing the public and you can have different versions of that so you could allow employees uh, but not the public you could allow the public but not employees you could prohibit everyone you could allow everyone I think those are uh, pretty much the four um, different scenarios that uh, that you as a private business owner could uh, decide and I really suggest that you uh, consult with your legal counsel before deciding on which one of those is most appropriate for your business. I think there's, there are some questions you really need to consult with, uh, with an attorney about prior to making a decision. And, um, uh, you know, the change in the law about vehicles uh, is the first thing. Uh, the, the law does make a change that you as an, an employer can prohibit the carrying of a concealed weapon, even by those who have a permit. Uh, from uh, carrying a weapon in a company vehicle. Um, I think uh, that uh, creates a gray area for someone who is maybe using a private vehicle on company business, um, being paid mileage or some kind of a stipend, as opposed to actually driving something that's owned by a business owner. So I would, uh, I would really encourage you, if you're going to allow that, to consult with your, your attorney prior to uh, making that decision. Um, the allowing of weapons on the premises by employees uh, versus by the public. Once again, something I think uh, it's allowable, certainly. Uh, I stated those four kind of scenarios earlier. Uh, you need to consult with an attorney prior to making that decision. Um, something that I don't think people think about is having a policy procedure manual or handbook on what's allowed and, and making sure your employees are educated. Uh, any of these provisions certainly need to be, uh, be noted in a document like that. But once again, something you need to consult with an illegal advisor about before doing so. And then I did have a question uh, that was raised to me by a local business owner about should I or shouldn't I provide training to my employees on uh, if I do allow weapons on the premises? And, and that certainly is a question to seek legal advice on first before, uh, before jumping into that realm. You know, anytime a firearm is used 
uh, at any point and someone is shot or killed, the police department is going to be called to investigate, and that is our role. We investigate a potential criminal action of using a firearm. Uh, we do not make determinations about self-defense or whether the law was properly uh, followed. Uh, we conduct the investigation, assemble the facts, and present that to the prosecuting attorney's office. And uh, those legal minds are the ones that then delve into it and make a determination on whether charges should be filed, whether something was, uh, uh, the firearm was used inappropriately, or whether one of the provisions of the law, as we've stated, um, uh, was followed and self-defense uh, is a viable uh, uh, option here and then charges might not be filed but uh, it's not something the police department determines uh, our goal is to uh, present all the facts in an unbiased manner and present that prosecuting attorney's office so regardless of whether you think that uh, you acted in uh, in a certain way we are going to be called we're going to investigate and i would encourage people to uh, cooperate with that investigation uh, should it be necessary Uh, the first thing is the fact that uh, different provisions of this law go into effect at different times. Um, the stand your ground provision, the self-defense uh, uh, castle doctrine changes uh, go into effect 30 days from the date of passage. So in this case, 30 days from the date of the override of the governor's veto, which was September 14th. So uh, October 14th, those provisions go in, into place uh, regardless of the other aspects of, of the law. The uh, CCW changes, uh, and most people aren't aware of this, and I think everyone needs to be aware of it, those changes do not go into place until January 1st of 2017. So uh, not effective immediately, as some people think, and not when the other provisions go into effect. So people still have um, you know, four months to, to get comfortable with this and, and get some legal advice on what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. For those individuals who are looking to uh, carry concealed without a permit, you can't do that legally until uh, January 1st of 2017, and you could face legal action, i.e. an arrest and possible charges if you're caught with a firearm prior to that date. Um, from an individual perspective, I'd also like to mention, I know this is focused on business owners, but um, if you want, want to carry a firearm out of state, so you're employed with a business and, and uh, you're conducting business outside and you want to carry your firearm with you, if you do not have a concealed carry permit, the reciprocal agreements that the state of Missouri has with 38 other states are not in effect. You have to have a permit to do that. Um, so you could subject yourself to uh, arrest or legal ramifications outside the state of Missouri if you're carrying without a permit, even though you may legally do so here. Um, and then the last thing I'd like to uh, bring up is, and this, is, this law was really tailored towards individual uh, folks who want to carry concealed. Uh, there's lots of questions, uh, as some of which we discussed here, regarding businesses and business owners and employees and, and uh, the public, and uh, really need to kind of dive into this and explore a little further before taking any action, making any changes to what you're currently doing.